JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, alleged intruder stabbed to death in St. Anne. An unidentified man met his demise during a home invasion in the peaceful community of Huntley, near Brownstown, St. Anne on Thursday. Another man was injured in the incident. According to reports, the now deceased man entered the home of an 83-year-old returning resident with a machete and demanded that the elderly woman and her relative, who were inside the house at the time, leave the premises which he claimed he owned. The elderly lady then alerted a close male relative who arrived at the scene, and a tussle ensued between the man and the alleged intruder. The intruder was stabbed and died on the spot. The other man, who relatives referred to as Martin, was injured. It is understood that the now deceased had trespassed on a number of occasions prior to the fatal incident. Teen bartender charged with possession of identity information. A teen bartender whose phone had several PDF files with information of individuals residing overseas, has been arrested and charged following a special operation in Savlamar, Westmoreland on Wednesday. Charged with illegal possession of firearm and possession of identity information is 19-year-old Kian Clark. Reports are that between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 p.m., lawmen searched several premises in the area, during which an on-site analysis was done to Clark's cell phone. The police said several PDF files were found populated with information of people who are residing overseas. A Beretta 9mm submachine gun was also recovered in nearby bushes. Clark was subsequently taken into custody. Her court date is being finalized. Up-and-coming dancehall entertainer Shaka Dax dies in car crash. Tributes are pouring in following the death of up-and-coming dancehall entertainer Shaka Dax, who died after he sustained injuries in a car crash in a Rockabessa, St. Mary on Thursday. Dax, 26, whose real name is Jamari Jones, was a member of dancehall star Charlie Black's team, Unstoppable Crew. Reports are that Jones was traveling in a Toyota motor car on the Rockabessa main road when the vehicle collided with a minibus shortly after 3 a.m. Thursday. Jones was allegedly trapped in the wrecked vehicle and had to be removed from it by firefighters. He was pronounced dead at hospital. For the persons who were reportedly injured as a result of the crash, which has been investigated by the St. Mary Police, Dax is known for things including Make It Out yeah, Some Vibes, Oven, and Chop the Food. Fisherman in Guns for Drugs Trade gets a total of 34 years in prison. A Jamaican fisherman was held with two illegal guns and 64,000 US dollars. Minutes after return from a guns for a drug mission to Haiti, has been sentenced to a total of 34 years in prison. Garnell Goldston, 45, has been described by police investigators as a major player in the guns for a drug trade. He was sentenced in the High Court last Friday after he pled guilty to two counts each of illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, possession of cocaine, and possession of criminal property. Goldson was ordered to serve eight years for each firearm, five years for the ammunition, five years for the cocaine, and three years for the cash. However, he'll only serve eight years because the court ordered that the sentences be served concurrently. Goldson, who is from High Street in Port Royal in Kingston, was surprised by detectives from the Police Narcotics Division at the Jam World Fishing Village in Portmore, St. Catherine, shortly after 9 p.m. on April 14 last year, prosecutors disclosed. He admitted to the cops that he had just arrived from Haiti. The police reported that during a search, the two guns, 13 rounds of assorted ammunition, 11 pounds of cocaine, and 64,000 US dollars, or 9.5 million Jamaican dollars, were found. Investigators believe the items were the proceeds from the shipment of a large quantity of ganja. Teacher accused of killing parents has mental disorders, evaluation report says. Simeon Ramsey, the school teacher accused of killing his parents in Christian Meadows, St. Catherine, last Friday, is suffering from two mental disorders. This was the diagnosis when Ramsey was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital for a psychiatric evaluation on Wednesday. When contacted, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, head of the St. Catherine South Police, declined to comment. But sources say Ramsey is suffering from schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The sources say the psychiatric ward revealed that Ramsey is a regular patient at the hospital. Up to yesterday, he was still in the care of the hospital. He is expected to be released back into police custody today. Ramsey, 25. Allegedly stabbed his father, Cesar Ramsey, a pastor, and his mother, Phyllis, a school vice principal to death, is their youngest offspring. Reports are that at about 4 a.m., residents found a motor vehicle belonging to one of Ramsey's abandoned on the side of the road. Bloodstains were reportedly found in the motor car. The police were summoned, and they reportedly went to the house of the couple, where their bodies were found with several stab wounds. Cops detained suspect in Seaview double murder. 
The St. Andrew South Police have detained a suspect in a double murder that occurred in Seaview Gardens, St. Andrew, last week. The suspect was reportedly picked up earlier this week during a police operation in the division. The suspect has been held for the deaths of 33-year-old Raymond Brown, otherwise called Postman, of Windsor Heights in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, and 30-year-old Leon Morgan, otherwise called Lee, of Erin Avenue, Kingston 10. Police investigations say the men were killed because of an ongoing gang war in the other communities. The investigators say the men were cooling out in Seaview Gardens, but were found by men with whom they were in conflict from another area. Reports were that about 9.35 p.m., residents heard loud explosions coming from a section of the community and alerted the police. On the arrival, Brown and Morgan were seen suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. NWC to undertake 26 water supply projects across Jamaica. The National Water Commission, NWC, has earmarked $150 million in its 2022-2023 budget for 26 projects that will see improved access to potable water to communities across Jamaica. Addressing Wednesday's official opening of the NWC's newly renovated customer care office at Bevin Avenue, Montego Bay, St. James, the Commission's President Mark Barnett refrained from naming any of the targeted communities under the initiative. For this year, we have about 20 small projects that we're going to undertake right across the island, and these will involve both replacement and extension of supply to rural communities. It is really part of the whole process of improving access to potable water, said Barnett. At the same time, the NWC boss urged customers to treat their water supply responsibly, as he said that the organization intends to do with the practice of writing off unpaid bills. 143 new COVID cases in Jamaica, 12 more deaths. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported 143 new COVID-19 cases and 12 deaths on Thursday, February 10, bringing the infection total to 126,732 and total deaths to 2,720. The new cases comprise 60 females and 83 males, with ages ranging from 15 days to 95 years. The cases were recorded in Hanover, 32, St. James, 29, Kingston and St. Andrew, 17, Clarendon and Manchester, 12 each, St. Catherine, 8, St. Mary, 8, Trelawney, 8, Westmoreland, 8, Portland, 5, St. Anne, 3, and St. Elizabeth, 1. The deceased are an 84-year-old male from St. James, his death was previously under investigation. A 91-year-old male, an 85-year-old male, an 83-year-old female, a 91-year-old male, a 43-year-old male, and a 91-year-old male from St. Elizabeth. A 91-year-old male from Trelawney, a 77-year-old female from Trelawney, a 93-year-old female from Westmoreland, an 80-year-old male from Clarendon, and a 56-year-old male from Manchester. The deaths occurred between August 2021 and February 2022. There were 355 recoveries in the last 24 hours, bringing that total to 72,574. Currently, 359 people are hospitalized, 53 of which are severely ill, while 11 are critically ill and 82 are moderately ill. The health ministry has reported a positivity rate of 17.6%. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.